It was late in the afternoon of the 27th of October 2005 in Clichy sous Bois where a group of 10 boys had just finished playing football at the stadium. They all walked home together and were passing by a construction site. Incidentally, an attempted robbery had occurred near the place and a resident had called the police. Because of high unemployment and the lack of job opportunities in the juvenile population, the tension in the region was at its peak. On top of that, there's a surge of mistreatment by the police to the people in the poorer community, which adds to the reason why the tensions were so high. Teenagers were often questioned by the police, which could take up to four hours and it usually has to involve their parents in order to be released. The boys didn't want to end up in the hands of the police, so they scattered themselves in order to avoid from being interrogated. Some went to the nearby cemetery, whilst another went to the Vincent Oriel Park and the rest went to the nearby power station. An hour later, the police successfully detained six of the boys which leave, only three who went into hiding at the power station. As the six boys were questioned at the police station, a huge blackout occurred which plunged the whole neighborhood into darkness. Of the three boys that went to the power station, one of them, Muhitin Altun, survived from electrocution. Bona Traori and Zayat Bena had unfortunately died from being electrocuted. Alton returned home shortly after and was hospitalized. In a statement by Alton, the youths in the housing project say they often face lengthy questioning from the police and they are required to present identity papers. He and his friends were trying to avoid the police so they ran in different directions. The police, however, quickly denied his statement, saying that they weren't chased at all and it was all just a rumor. However, because of the existing tension due to the unjust police treatments, the growing frustration of unemployment and residents' complaints of racism and discrimination in the Arab and African community, the event of the boys' death had the people explode in anger. Thus, the 2005 French riot began, which lasted for over three weeks. The riot was initially confined to the Paris area, but it quickly spread like a wildfire, and soon, it became uncontrollable. Other populous areas of the city were affected, and eventually, the outskirts of France's urban areas and many rural areas were also affected. The situation became more violent each day, and the city became a battlefield. Hundreds and thousands of cars were ignited into flames daily, and thousands of rioters were arrested. President Jacques Chirac declared a state of emergency on the 8th of November, where local authorities are authorized to impose curfews and raids without warrants. However, despite the new regulations, the riot still grew out of control. The riot started to worsen beginning on the 9th of November, where a school was burned in Belfort and police officers were wounded across the country. According to the Interior Minister, violence, arson and attacks on police worsened on the 11th and morning of the 12th, and there were further attacks on electricity substations, causing a blackout in the northern parts of Amiens. The rioting continues as young people attacked cars and threw rocks at riot police, which they responded with tear gas. Firebombs were thrown at the treasury in Bobigny and at an electrical transformer in clichy sous bois where the disturbance in the neighborhood first began. A daycare center in Cambrai and a tourist agency in Fontenay-sous-Bois were also attacked. Eighteen buses were damaged by arson at a depot in Saint-Étienne, and a mosque was hit by three firebombs, which did little damage. Ever since the rioting began, the first ever national address was finally made on the 14th of November. President Jacques Chirac pledged to create new opportunities for the young people in an effort to prevent future resurgence of urban violence. He spoke of the crisis of meaning, 
a crisis of identity, condemning racism in the country and promised to train 50,000 youths in two years' time. How many CVs are thrown in the waste paper basket just because of the name or the address of the applicant, he said. We are all aware of discrimination and he called for equal opportunities for the young and rejecting suggestions of a U.S.-style quota system. At the same time, he also defended the country's measure to respond to the violence, saying that violence never solves anything, and if one belongs to our national community, one must respect the rules. The unrest had finally died down after the 20th night, as the country was returning to an almost normal situation, claimed the national police chief. Although there was violence still happening here and there, the three-month extension of the emergency laws proved to be effective in curbing the riots from spreading any further. So what caused the riots? In the national address by President Jacques Chirac, he said that the people are having a crisis of identity and the widespread discrimination of immigrants cannot be ignored. This is because France has a long history of immigration which, in 1931, had the highest proportion of immigrants of any Western country. Around 3 million immigrants made up 7% of its population, a higher ratio than in the US at the time. On Monday evening, the far-right leader Jean-Marie Le Pen led a protest against France's immigration laws addressing a crowd of about 300 National Front supporters, he criticized France's immigration policies. We let in 10 million foreigners over 30 years. It's wild insanity. No country can handle that invasion, Mr. Le Pen said. He said that France was now paying the bills for its mad and criminal immigration from the third world. In an article by The Guardian in 2010, it is believed that there is growing hopelessness in the generation of young French people who live in the suburbs and are marginalized because of their skin color. The discrimination against the third and fourth generation children of immigrants has worsened and Nicolas Sarkozy's right-wing anti-immigrant rhetoric is to be blamed. Sarkozy, compared to the other French presidents, has used immigration issues to secure his position in politics. He has rounded up Roma, introduced France's fifth immigration law in seven years, banned Muslim women wearing the niqab in public places, and launched a national debate on what it means to be French. Days before the riot began, on the 25th of November, Nicolas Sarkozy made a very controversial statement to the people of the suburbs, saying that the crime-ridden neighborhood should be clean with a power hose and described that it has the potential to be violent, labeling it as gangrene and rabble. According to the New York Times, the majority of the youths committing the acts are Muslim and of African or North African origin. Many children of native French have also taken part. The BBC reported that French society's negative perceptions of Islam and social discrimination of immigrants had alienated some French Muslims and may have been a factor in the causes of the riots, as it is seen as the biggest challenge to the country's secular model in the past 100 years. It was reported that there was discontent and a sense of alienation felt by many French Muslims and North African immigrants in the suburbs of French cities. However, the editorial also questioned whether or not such alarm is justified. France's Muslim ghettos are not hotbeds of separatism and that the suburbs are full of people desperate to integrate into the wider society. <laughs>